Do you need help advancing your coding skills? Check out my new program, Code Breakthrough. Code Breakthrough offers hands-on learning with Python and data structures, algorithms, and interview challenges. With a supportive community and regular new content, Code Breakthrough will help you get hired or advance your career. For a limited time launch special, use the link in the description to get 20% off your subscription. See you there. Hey guys, welcome back. So in this video, we're going to review user input. And I know we just talked about it for a couple videos, but we got the essentials and honestly, user input is actually very simple in Python compared to something like Java, which probably makes you wanna pull your hair out if you're a new developer, because it's just a pain. Heck, why don't I just show you how to do it in Java? You know, oh, it's broken. We're already off to a bad start, guys. Psst. What is going on, man? Oh, there we go. All right, it's doing something, guys. So first thing, you gotta create a new project, which I did to save time, and then new class. And then you gotta select this public static void main args and give your class a name such as input. And then this is the boilerplate code just to get anything running. And then if you want to get data from the user, you have to say scanner scanner is a new scanner. And then inside of the parentheses, you have to say system dot in and then you have to hover over scanner import scanner from java.util and then to get the actual value you have to do string name is scanner dot next line and then if you want to print the name you have to do dot print line and then pass in name whoops name all right, and then you're supposed to hit run and it's supposed to do something, although it's not. So you can see that it's a lot of work inside of Java, which you can do the same thing in Python in like one line of code, which is literally just input and then you assign it to a variable. So anyways, you can get this code up in GitHub. My username is Caleb Curry and then just go to the Python repository and we are under 04 user input. And I'm gonna take all this and paste it into an editor and we're just gonna go through it, make sure we understand everything. So paste that in here. So the very first thing I want to show is that you can get user input and assign it to a variable, and then use that variable within an expression such as this here. And it can automatically be concatenated. We're using a string and a string, no issues at all. And it will get that input right here. So we put in Caleb, and it says, hello, Caleb, right there. Next up, asks us for our favorite number and a second favorite number. So we can throw some numbers in here, 50, and another one would be 25, and it says 50 plus 25 is 75. It also shows the types here in case you're interested in seeing them. So it prints the type of number one, it's of string. And then if you want, you can cast those to new types like so. So we assigned it to new num one and new num two, which we printed those types and we get int int right there. And then we showed how to print that back out. You actually have to convert it back to a string. That's one of the downsides of Python. In Java, anytime you print to the console, it'll automatically convert stuff to string. But you know, nothing's perfect. So we just have to do a little bit extra work, convert that to a string. This situation, num1 and num2 are already strings because we are using the original variables, which we got from the input. And then new num is the integer version. So. And the example we did in the previous video, we just converted automatically from the console. So we had to do another conversion there. But in this case, we're already in string, so we're good to do concatenation. If you're certain you're going to get a number, it's best to cast it right away, which is pretty much what I was just saying. So in this situation, we know we're gonna get a float. Give me a third number. I'll say 5.5. And that's gonna be assigned to num3. And then it adds all the numbers together to get 80.5 which we can do seamlessly. We don't have to do any conversions. And this is an interesting thing to point out. We have two integers and a float, and we can add those all together. We don't have to do any type conversion there. That's different than if we had a string and a number, which we can't automatically add together. So that is the basics of input, and it's really the foundation for dynamic applications. And we're gonna be using it for the rest of the series. So make sure you understand everything, and I'll see you guys in the next one. We're gonna be getting into new types, so Booleans. Booleans are great. Now the question is, is that a true statement? I don't know, that's up to you, and that's what we're gonna find out in the next one, so see you then.